so aggregating dot uh, documents aggregating means uh, like doing some operations some average or something like that so for let's take an example of it and let me first open <clears throat> just logging into the mongo Here we have the okay, it's logging in. Yep. Right. <laughs> so we have a uh, this document over here with the name uh, salary. So let us try to do some aggregation on this. So we will use this aggregate method. So we will say db dot salary dot aggregate. Dollar group underscore ID colon dollar department comma. State total cost dollar sum dollar sum. I have missed on some bracket dollar crop colon apartment cost dollar salary I closed this dollar salary I closed this Missed one. Ah, oh, here it is. Okay. 
parents. Right. So here it goes. So I am getting department wise total cost I am getting over here. Okay, so that is a aggregate method, db dot salary dot aggregate, and you can just specify grouping on the basis of the department. And let's take D E S I designation. Designation. So I am getting the designation wise cost over here. Total cost of assistant managers, directors, and so on. I'm getting it over here. Okay. So this is how we can do it. And if I wanted to do multiple things like total cost, average salary, minimum salary, so we can use all these options over here, like you can share the query in the chat box. Sorry. Can you share the query in the chat box? We'll also try. Okay. You do have the salary. I think I have given you this salary. One. Hmm? Yeah. I have given you this. Yes. Here it is. <laughs> you can copy it from here, put it into the note back, and then copy paste it to the this what do you call yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah. On the command prompt. Yes, thanks. Yeah. Okay. Dollar salary. Let me say comma. And I will say average G average L colon dollar. Dollar average colon dollar salary. Oops. We are getting the average salary as well over here. And if you say we can also say one more. Team size, colon, dollar, sub colon, one all And I'm doing designation wise. Let me make it as department. Here it is. So you can see the department wise in HR total salary is this, average salary is this, number of team members is this. Okay. So that is known as aggregations okay so this is aggregations now the next thing which comes up over here is atomic operations okay so okay before this the aggregation which we have done if we try to compare it just for the understanding purpose if we try to compare it with the sequel we can compare it with the group group by clause group by clause which we use so they can be compared through aggregate function Okay, now let's take an atomic operation and example over here. So for which, first of all, I have to create one document. So let's create a document. So I will say DB DB dot stop. stop. We see it has db dot stock dot insert stock or order dot oh, 
message there. <clears throat> Order. Dot dot insert dot insert and underscore id colon one time I am specifying the ID also. Let me say product description. Let's take mouse. Category IP comma stock colon. Let's take ten. Stock colon. Let's take eight comma dot by colon. Why? Let's take CID colon C equal zero one comma name colon. Let's take. QTY not QTY let's take date which is date Pull up. let's take In August twenty twenty one. This Let's take the ID. Zero two comma name colon comma three date. Let me say nineteen August nineteen twenty one. Let's see if all the parentheses and all brackets are fine or not. Let's press enter. Oh, wow, it's done. Right now, let me say D 
db.ord.find we have to say find dot ready here it goes now see what we have uh, tried to create over here so this contains the details of the this document contains the detail of a product right which is dell mouse category is it and the original stock is 10 balance is stock is 8 and till now this product has been bought by two uh, two clients that is c0001 and c0002 on 18th and 19th august respectively okay now now we want want uh, what we wanted to do we want to create uh, atomic operations over here right so what does it say is to maintain atomicity is it is recommended to keep all the related information which is updated together in a single document so what will happen whenever whenever a, uh, someone will purchase this product the entry will be made over here the detail of the customer will be over here and so this bought by the name of uh, the value of the field bought by will be changed yes or no the value of this field will be changed hello there are you people getting it hello am i audible yes right so uh, the bought by will be changed and the balance stock should also automatically be changed so for this purpose we have a method called find and modify find and modify so it will find this particular record as of now i have just so this is only one uh, what to say one document within this collection within the collection dot ord we have only one document that is this one okay i could have added more documents also now let us see so the whatever the changes will be done it is will be done in this so we have db.ord.find and find and modify find and modify <clears throat> then here the method which we will be using over here the option which we will be using in this method is query I think it's this is query. Query. Underscore ID. Underscore ID colon one. Underscore ID colon one. It is searching for this document by underscore ID. So it is searching for this document, comma. We say PAL balance stock colon dollar GT colon zero. Right, right, query. Then update colon. What to update? Dollar INC colon. I will tell you the details of all this balance stock colon minus one okay then second option which we will be used comma comma
डॉलर पुश डॉलर पुश कोलर colon PLD colon see zero three comma name colon comma Days. Colon. Next day. Twenty. August. Twenty twenty one. And okay, so let's see once again db dot find dot. You can see that the Rohan Singh has been added over here, and the balance stock has been updated as ten. Now let us understand what we have written in the initial query. This. So dot db dot order dot find and modify query. First thing is query. Query means we are searching for a particular document. Which document with the underscore id is one, and the balance st uh, stock should be greater than zero. So it is checking the uh, balance stock from the specific id. So if these two things are met, if the query has been fulfilled, then the further statement will be fired so that is fine it is finding for this and modify so the modify is this update now in update there are four parts we have used so find and modify searches for a document and modify it query specifies the search criteria update specify the updation in the document then we have used dollar inc inc is used for increment INC mean increment increments the value of a field by the specified amount. So dollar INC what balance stock colon minus one. So increase the balance stock by negative one. So that means increase it will be decreased by one. Then dollar push it is used to add an element to an array. Add an element, or you can call it as an item to an array. So as you can see, bought by, bought by is basically an array. So in this array, there are three documents, sub documents, or sub elements, or el you can say these are the items of an array. So one, two, three. Dollar push where into bought by. And you have specified the values over here of the customer id name and the purchase date clear let us try to add once again over here so if i want you to have let's take we have another purchase everything will bought by 
let's take customer number four. Right, so I have added one more. Now the balance stock should be six and one more record of Deepak Gupta, one more item should be added to the uh, array that is Deepak Gupta. You can see balance stock six, detail added. Let's try to add one more over here and see what happens. Customer number five. Please take care of the background noise. So you can see that the stock is getting deducted and the balance is being updated over here. Let me quickly add a few more items to this so that I can tell you what I wanted to highlight over here. I'm adding a few more items to this array. Right. So let's take dot ORD dot find. Now the balance stock is one. You can see that the elements are being added over here and the balance stock is one. Let me go back and I will add one more over here. Right, and I will like to add one more over here. See, I am getting the output as null. I'm getting the output as null. And if I will say find, you will see 
Deepak Sharma has not been added over here. Why? Because the balance stock is zero. And when you are writing the statement query ID one balance stock greater than zero, so it, it this query cannot be fulfilled. That's why you are getting a result as null. Okay. So this is known as atomic operations. Am I clear on this? Yes. <clears throat> okay. All right. So let's proceed then. So remember this quickly find and modify. We'll find uh, and search for a document and modify it. Query specify the criteria. Update specify uh, specify the updation in the document. INC increment and push add an element to an. Uh, element to an array. Okay, so have I shared this assignment last time? Last time we also talked about the indexes. I think yes. I might have shared this. Yes, no, no, this, no, 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 no. Okay, so not a problem. Now you can do it in the employee collection. Create a unique index on the employee ID field, right? EID field. Create a TTL. TTL stands for TTL, remember TTL, time to live. Create a TTL index on city for 10 minutes. TTL index. List five highest paid employees from the employee document. So sorting, we have done in the last one. Total salary, team size and average salary for each department. That is uh, aggregation you have to use. Create an embedded document containing product information and array for customer information, the product information and the customer information perform an operation to add a customer info into an array and update the available stock. So the example which I have just given you, that is what you have to do over here. Okay, All right. Then comes the data modeling with MongoDB. What type of data modeling we have in MongoDB? So. RDD, R, uh, RDBMS approach versus MongoDB's approach. So you know what you mean by uh, data modeling. What do you understand by data modeling? Huh? Hello? Please respond. I'll start with creating the schema. What tables, what columns you want. Yes, data modeling is start with schema. Correct, that is fine. So data modeling is how to manage or work with the multiple data, uh, multiple tables and all. If the data is spread accordingly, how we will work and all. So that is when in, so in the RDBMS, we create a normalized schema. As we have done in SQL, that we created a normalized schema that distributing the, uh, the data into the different tables. Like uh, when we were doing SQL, we created an employee uh, structure where employee personal details in one table and the official details in one table. We have talked about the inventory where we have distributed the data into the different tables. Okay, so that is the RDBMS approach that we create a normalized schema. So we create normalized schema, we distribute the data into the different tables, then we relate those tables. Develop an application and queries. The application is designed as per the data. So first of all, if you have to design an application, if you are creating something, first of all, you have to create a normalized structure. If you will go with the RDBMS approach, first of all, you will create the structure and then you will create an application. Are you, do you agree with me? Yes. So first create a structure and then the application. This is what RDBMS approach says. Now, what could be the concern over here? The concern could be uses and performance. Right? So over here, we in the starting of the application, we are not very much clear about the users. How much users will be there? How many users will be there? Okay. So, but, and the performance. 
so expecting is from the initially only from the initial level we have to consider okay if we uh how many users should be there how much data should be taken so if it is a small thing let's take an example i have few uh, few uh, records my data is very limited so it might be that i don't think feel like distributing into four five ten tables it is not required because i have to just maintain the small data right so i have not uh, created a proper normalized model but later i saw that my data has grown grown and now I, it is a requirement to distribute the data right it is a requirement to distribute the data so then it will be a concern so if your data is a small you are distributing it you are unnecessarily putting the efforts why should so much efforts will be taken and if you have and if you have a bigger data and you are not doing uh, that then performance could be a concern so here if we go with the rdbms approach we have to if we go with the rdbms approach we have to specify that what uh, because the first the what do you say the first the structure is designed and then on the basis of which we will be application so i would like to say over here what i'm trying to conclude over here is the less dynamic approach over here in comparison to non like mongodb model now in mongodb or a no sql model when we say first develop the application whatever the application you wanted to develop develop that application right now let's say you have developed an application which is taking uh, this application is used to take the feedback from the students of let's take learn day right so this application you have created over here and define the data model then depending on the application you can create the model and with the time you can improve the application suppose currently the um, application you created it has only five questions now later you want to have more refined view uh, feedback of the users so you have created 10 questions in the feedback so that is you are improving the model and sorry improving the application and once you are improving the application you can also improve the data model more dynamic you can make the changes to the data model as well and the best part is there is no downtime right you need not to uh, down your server and on a real time basis you will be able to make the changes designed for users pattern data model evaluation is easy easily you can make the changes to the data model example let's take uh, i think i might have quoted this example initially as well uh, currently let's take an example from learn way only let's take learn way is currently it's a small it's a small uh, institute i would say as of now it is a small institute which is catering to the students uh, nearby students within a radius of let's take 10 kilometers 20 kilometers right so here the application which you have created let's take a student registration you have created a uh, application for registration of the student and which has which has the address part address and the yeah it also doesn't have a city part you have the address right the address you are not specifying the city city is by default it is taking the city now later the scope has grown and now you have let's take learn way has initially it was single branch at one particular place now let's take it has certain branches in hyderabad now you have a requirement in the uh, in the registration form you also have a requirement to capture 
that this particular student is enrolled with which particular center location. Center location is one more parameter which needs to be taken, which was not initially. Right? So simply you can add one more thing. It could be done very easily. You can add keep a key and value pair. You can add this also into the document. Okay. Now let's take now initially learn Bay was not giving the online education. They were hundred percent into offline, but now they are also giving online as well as offline after some time. So again, a new requirement is there. You done the changes in the application and you can also no challenges with storing the data. You can uh, change the model as well. Am I clear with this? Yes. Right. So here we have tried to uh, compare the RDBMS approach and the MongoDB approach over here. Let's say data modeling with MongoDB. Data model is designed at the application level. So as I told you, depending on the app, uh, application, the data will keep on, the data model will keep on changing. Design is a part of each phase of application life, lifetime. So throughout as, as and when the application is being changed, the data model will also be keep on changing. The data which the application need and read and write uses of data affects the data model. Okay, so the data model will be dependent on what type of operation is there. Now, supposingly you have uh, created an application in which the user can read few blocks. The user can read few blocks. Uh, so there is more of read operation rather than write operation. So accordingly, you can see which model is better and depending on the utility or the primary uses of the, uh, this, of the application. If your application is more of reading, uh, uh, reading users, then it could be optimized for the reading purpose. And if it is more of write operations, it will be optimized for the writing purpose and the data model will keep on changing along with the application. Right. Then we have normalized data model over here. In this model, every document has an ID. Every sub document has an ID. The normalized data model describe relationship using references between the document. Okay, let me see. Yes, I can give you an example over here. So. Okay, let me give you an example of this. Hmm. When do we use normalized data model? When embedding would result in duplication of data, but would not provide sufficient read performance advantage to the implications of the duplications. So when the embedding, when embedding we have just uh, seen an example of embedded document. I will give you one more example of embedding documents. Putting one document into another document is known as embedding. But when the embedding between quite complicated, it is suggested to be uh, de-embedded and make it as a normalized. How? We will just see it. To represent more complex relationships. If you have more complex relationships, you can use normalized data model. And if you have a large hierarchical data sets, then also a normalized data model could be better. So let's take an example over here. Dot 
We already have this case already a batch for four. Okay, okay, okay. Then I will say db dot access dot sort Access to insert UID column one and one And db dot pd dot so one comma Let's take phone. There it goes. So I have created three separate documents. Right. So I will say db dot user dot find. I have the detail of the user in this, the ID and the name of the user. Then I can say uh, PD, personal details of the user and access information. It is in the group number one, which is sys level is sys admin, and here it is. So I could have kept all the information in one document also, but I have bifurcated the information into three documents, and I have kept one common field over here that is the UID. So UID indicating that all the three documents has the information regarding the same uh, user. UID one, his name is Robert. UID, his access import contact details are this, and his access details are this.
you understand this point normalized distributing the data into multiple documents this is what we are doing multiple collections are you with me on this yeah okay wonderful does it making sense to you are we on the right track and what's the advantage of splitting the document that's what that's what uh, good that's what we talked about over here here i'm just giving you i as i just told you we can put all the things in one but if you think if as of now we have taken a very small example but if you think that this thing is becoming too much every document has too much of information and every time you do not need to access all the information of the user so you can distribute it now say i want to have only the uh, say personal detail of the user right so i know i have a separate document which has the personal details that is pd separate collection right whatever yes. it is the modular approach we have put it in a small small pieces in different documents else if all the information is there in one and it could be embedded in one document that could be so let me give you an example of embedded so you will be able to compare it very clear okay to make yeah. it simple we are dividing it again if you want i can take an example from sql in sql we have divided the employee details and the salary details you done sql with me right yes or no yes okay so uh, in employee and the salary in two different tables we could have also kept it in one table correct yeah yeah we could have kept it in uh, one table but to effectively manage it we have bifurcated it so the same logic we are applying over here also okay let's see the embedding this thing will automatically be more clear so if you have a large hierarchical data then we can put it into a different documents that embedding uh, doing the embedding right so this is an example of normalized let's see the embedded data model so here it goes let's take one example over here so i will say db dot <clears throat> let me name it as Search. Right. Dot insert. I will say EID colon E triple zero one comma. I will go with PD colon.
take comma Here it is. Let's, 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 let's see if all the brackets are fine or not. Yep, it's okay. All right, so we inserted, let's say, db.emp dot find dot mp2 dot find here it is here it goes now you can see that this is an embedded document a document within a document so this is your one document right in this pd which contains the personal information personal details then another document contact which contains the contact information and third is of OFF which contains the official information. So like this, we are creating a embedded document over here. This is known as embedded document. In this model, all the related data is in a single document, also known as denormalized data model. Okay, it is denormalized. So if I simply break this into three separate documents, it will become a normalized, which I have done initially. And if I will put all the things together, it will become denormalized. That is known as embedded, right? And in this one model can be embedded as a sub document in the another document, sub document, which is stored right as a JSON object, right? Which we have already seen over here, right? So this is an example of denormalized data model. Now is it clear? So depending yes. on the data, you can save it as whatever you feel like, which is when you feel that it is more appropriate at this point. Then comes something known as referencing. Inserting the object ID of one document in another is known as referencing. Okay, now instead of putting a document into another document and doing the embedding, we are putting a reference of another document over here, right? So <coughs> let us create, um, okay, let me create a document over here, so db. Dot author dot insert db dot author dot insert and 
I will say AID author ID Inserted. Let me insert one more author ID. Add one more over here. So I have three authors over here. Let me say db dot author dot find. Here it is. Three documents of the authors. <coughs> then I will say books db dot Books, book dot insert ID. Let me say book ID book ID
Hold on. Let us take one more. Book two. Start with intro to as well. Introductions this. This is the same. And book two. One more. Book number. <clears throat> of W Option. Let's take Press and now let us see e dot books db dot books dot find dot pretty it was book I think so yeah books or book here it is. So you can see I have the author. Author dot find. So I have in this I have the details of the author. And here is the details of the books. Details of the author and the details of the book over here. See, we have the details of the author and the details of the books over here. So in this book, Introduction to Mongo, here we have author and we have given a reference to the author details. So the author details are available in this document. So this is an example of referencing over here. Are you getting this point? Hello? Check. Yes. Huh? I can't yeah. hear you, hello. And earlier we used to see the value, right? So we used to link the document, different documents by value or by unique name, right? One variable. Now we are uh, commanding the document using the object ID. That's the difference, right? Basically. Uh, combining. Three yes. Uh -huh. I mean, we have. We are building a relationship, right? Between three documents or three things, right? By using a common ID previously. Now we are using this object id right that is why that is how we are building this um, relationship right uh, to certain extent but i will not use a word relationship over here we are not making a relationship 
but a more appropriate word will be referencing yeah yeah right like yeah. if i give you an example okay when you uh, go to a bank let's see if this makes sense to you when we go to a bank let's take you have to deposit some money so you deposited the money to the counter and you asked him okay i have to uh, do some investment can you also tell me about some uh, uh, say fd options in your bank so what he say he referenced you to some another desk he say you can move to the cabin number 10 to know about the investment so there for the investment you have been referred somewhere else investment options were not available over there it is kept in a separate cabin yeah correct yeah so same over here we have the details of the author but the author details has been kept at the particular place so if you want to know about this author you can go to this uh, document and you will get the details of that and the value of this object i did this will be unique within the same database or across database this document will be database obviously it will be uh, unique yeah within the same database or even it will be unique across databases across database two okay. documents could not have a same id across database anyway okay okay right <laughs> right and okay so this we talked about a referencing over here now let us see a lookup aggregation over here what is lookup aggregation so i will explain this but first let's take an example over here and and and, 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 and emp let's see if i have this over here was this database at four Makes sense. Can be. Okay. So what I will do? I wanted to have, along with this, along with the employee details, I have a uh, collection called EMP, which contains the employee details. and i have a collection called salary which contains the salary details i wanted to have the employee details along with the salary details so that calls for a lookup aggregation so i will say db.emp. aggregate dollar dollar what happened dollar Um. Um. Could be colon. Yeah. Yeah. 
Let us see what finds. Yes. Okay. Here it is. Let us see this. So you just look at this. Look at this object we are getting. So we are getting the employee ID, Gaurav Gupta, his details, along with the salary details. The salary details is in the document number this, employee ID this, department designation and salary is being displayed over here. Right? So we are getting the from the two different documents over here. Let me write it once again. Here it goes. Oops, my bad. I just wanted to show you this thing. So what we have done, let us take focus on one document over here. db.emp.aggregate which dollar lookup we are using dollar lookup here, here from the name of the collection from salary from the salary we have to get the data local field is employee id so from local means in the employee in the employee table we will search look the employee id foreign field is employee id Local field, foreign field. That means we are getting it on the basis of the employee ID. We are trying to connect the two documents with the help of employee ID as, as salary details. So these things are appearing as a salary details over here. Okay, if I can get an example over here as well. We got books. We got mind. And we got author dot mind. Let us check if we can work like this one. So I will say db.emp.r from instead of author db. author dot aggregate dollar equip from book local field is underscore id foreign field is
author as author details. Here it goes. So if you will see over here, here you see object ID is this author is A001 Robert. He has written two books, B001 and B002, Introduction to Mongo and Introduction to SQL. These are the two books written by this particular author. Okay, here you see author number A002. We do not have any books written by this particular author. It is blank. And we have A003, that is George. So he has written the book, Power of Tabu. Clear? So that is a lookup aggregation. So it adds an array of related data from other documents. So this is an array. Whenever we put anything into the square bracket, it indicates an array. Array means collection of items. It's add and uh, add, adds an array of related data from other documents. So you can see this is the related data related because it is of the respective authors and we are getting it from a different document. Hmm. It performs like equality match in a simple words to make it more simple. I can say you can compare it with the lookup formula we have in Excel. You can compare it with like that. Okay. Then dollar, dollar lookup from collection to join. So I want to have, as I have written over here, from book. I am getting, I am putting an aggregation on author and I want to get the data from the book. So collection to join, which is the local field and which is the foreign field. So the local field in this is underscore ID. I want to compare the underscore ID of the author with the author, uh, author ID with the author of the author's table of, sorry, author collection as a output array field name, as the name of the output array that is author details. I hope it is clear. Yes, no, maybe. Yes. Yes. Okay. Here it goes. Right. Relationship in Mongo. Okay. Right, I have given you an example over here as well. Relationship in Mongo, there could be one to one relationship, one to many relationship, many to many, and many to one and many to many relationships. So let me give you one example of this. If I will say in this, I can take an example over here as well. Let me try to explain this with the use of this. Hmm. Okay, let's create this example. dot let's say owner owner dot 
insert. I do. Now I will say db dot address dot oh I missed one thing address dot insert Insert, I will say value one address. Taken four addresses over here. Hmm. 
and I will say TV dot sorry TV Yes. So I guess my name this property address name key is missing. Ah yes. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> right. So P dot So, <clears throat> and I would say find dot pretty. So here you can see one owner, one property, one owner, one property. X. Oops, my bad. Sorry. Yes. Okay, one owner, one address. It indicates one to one relationship. One to one relationship. Now, let us take one more example. Property address. Instead of giving this, make an array. We take this comma this. one owner two properties one to many this document is representing one to many relationship it is referencing to many documents over here or if we say one to many many to one to one one to many many properties owned by a particular owner so in that case i have to make it in that in the address i have to add the name of the the id of the owner so it will become many or many properties many users so if i will put this let me see it will be an example of many to many here it goes so owner Oh, I have again taken the human thing. Let 
me make it as number let's make it as three so property id this this and let me take one move this one this let's see here it goes now you can see these multiple uh, many to many relationship these two properties are owned by this person as well as this person right so this is a different type of relationship which we have i have tried to put an example over here yeah am i clear yes okay right so that is the relationships in mongo now the next thing which comes up over here is mongo db drivers now what is mongo db drivers drivers these are the packages we install for different programming language in which the application might be written now you might be writing the application in c java python whichever application you are uh, using you are using to write the application and you wanted to use mongo as your backend and to establish a connection with the mongo you have to download the appropriate driver appropriate driver needs to be downloaded okay and all the drivers are available on the mongo db page so you can click on this <clears throat> here it is under the docs here is the drivers change so you can see the driver for c plus plus java whichever you want c sharp anything you say java or you let's take on c++ so installing mongo d mongo c double x is the name of the driver so it has given you a complete document over here how to download include this whatever the command you have to write and you have to follow this these instructions to down so in the download page you will be getting the entire details about all the languages let us go to java drivers you will see what is the name of the driver we have java driver it is the recommended mongo db java driver so this is the only driver which you need to download mongo db for java developers okay similarly for python for anything you can go node py mongo mongo is the name of the driver for this and if you will proceed further it will give you the entire here it is py mongo uh, i will click on this right so step by instructions if you want you can go to the tutorial and it will give you the detailed instruction how to connect with the respective application import mongo then whatever further you have to work in python for this purpose but what we have to highlight or what i'm trying to highlight over here is that what is mongodb driver so mongodb has given you the drivers you use whichever application you use use the appropriate driver and you will be able to use the features of mongodb using that driver. 
okay here it is the next thing which comes up over here is data type in mongo data type in mongo db so in mongo db till now we have not talked about data type in mongo db you already know the meaning of the data types right but here it has been taken automatically mongo db is automatically taking care of the data type depending on the data you are inserting into it right example let me say db data insert and let me take it as or i will integer now please do not get confused this uh, the key i have written it is normally a uh, in it is a normal key it is nothing related to the data type okay or let me make it as salary and i will say by out oh. inserted and you will say db dot db dot data dot find right so you can see this is appearing as a integer data type right however if you put it in thing if you put anything in the quotes it becomes a string so if i will put salary or let me put it in the double quotes over here and you see it is appearing in quotes it indicates that it is a text the string right so for a string 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 could be any string you write over here welcome to oh. this is a number and these two are the examples of a string then boolean data type boolean data, data type which has the value like true and false so i will say db dot data dot insert insert let's say let's take an example like you can say that i am not putting it in the quotes this is a this is not a string it is a boolean data type over here i am not doing anything i am not specifying at anything then double data type double when you have uh, like this no matter if this decimal value it will consider to be a double data type so i will say db dot insert like i will say double stay 125.9 it is a double data type <laughs> then array array a collection of elements is known as an array so let us create one var go 
forces is equal to SQL. Insert something say what you pull and put it. Here. So you're getting an array over here. So this is an array data type. Then object data type example, if you wanted to put it something as an object. So here this wet by using where I have used over here as where, where I'm creating a variable and variable courses is equal to. So I have created a variable and assigned a value to this variable. So I will say where let's take object we have to create object over here so let's do it like that where ours is equal to sql colon 25 W colon now P dot data dot insert. <laughs> you ours module ours colon hrs So you can see the thing which is appearing in a curly braces, it is appearing as an object. So it is an object data type. <laughs> okay, then null. Null data type. So I will say db dot insert dot db dot sorry db dot data dot insert oops insert we were talking about now let's take phone number or email phone number. there is no email null data type then we have the date data type. So let us take where D1 equal to date. Date where D2 is equal to ISO ISO eight. This is another data type where D three is equal to ISO 
indeed and okay so I will say db dot data dot insert the date what colon comma date two colon d two comma date three colon date d three here it is so you can find some different Saturday August twenty one this is IST ISO date you can see this and this will be the same I new date which was day one it is the date date it is appearing in a complete Saturday August 21 this uh, entire IST complete detailed date is coming with the date ISO date is coming like this 2021-08-21 okay and this is when we do a new date, this is how it is appearing over here. Okay. So this is a different date data types, ISO date or date that we use. And if you will put the dates in the quotes, it will be appearing as the string, not as the date. Although it will look like a date, but it is for the calculation purpose. It will not act as a date. It will act as a string. Then we have a time stamp, right? If you wanted to have some time, so let's take back even is equal to db dot data dot search and colon So the time stamp coming in the seconds over here. 64 bit time value is being displayed over here. Okay. Then another data type is object ID. If you wanted to store the object ID for this, let me take some object ID over here. We can take this. The object ID. So that we will equal to oops. dot data dot db dot data dot insert Let's 
Students ID colon one. Let us find reference ID object ID. This is a feeding over the reference ID. <coughs> okay, then. Now, uh, there is one more method uh, option over here that in if you wanted to search for a particular document on the basis of data type, so you can do it in MongoDB. You can search on the basis of data type. I would like to say like, let's take this one. So db dot data dot find. Where I have that character. Date one. Okay, let's try. Where date one. Colon eight one colon dollar five colon eight. I can remember a shot in the phone. Date one. Date one. Date two, let me check the date two. Hmm. Date two. Here, date two has been specified as date. So I think a better example could be let's take use. Date of joining. Okay, let's see. DB dot EMP dot find. DOJ colon dollar dollar type colon eight. Oh. Let us take DOP. EID EID colon
Mm -hmm. I will have something like this. Don't have type colon string, so I don't have. Okay, I let me quickly create this data, then we will be able to do it. DB dot right DOP dot DB dot. dot sort doj colon zero one jam two thousand twenty twenty one one is this Eight. So date. Let's Let me say Now, dot book data dot one. Now, dot find D O J colon. DOJ colon and dollar type oops dollar type colon it you see I am getting only one where the data type is date. So I'm finding it on the basis of the data type where type is equal to date. Get the data joining where the data type is equal to date. Okay. So I was just looking for the appropriate data where I can give you this example. Am I clear? Am I clear? Uh, I just have a query. So this date yes, is uh, not a date data type where you have given date of 2021-0101. Where, think, where, where? Uh, so the third First one, one? No, the third First, one. First, second, third. Just. Uh, which one you are saying? The 
third this one the, the third one yeah yeah it is what i have given over here let me check uh, yeah this one date no uh, this will not be a uh, no this is also a date this is also a date only the first one is not the date 01 jan 2021 it is not that uh, date and so, here it is also converted as a string yes it is appearing in a double quote so it has converted this into a string okay okay that is it why it, been... it did not come in your final yes okay, yes So uh, these were the various data types in Mongo. So you have already seen that depending on the data you put, put it automatically takes the data type. That is the why we have now after covering so much in Mongo, now we are talking about data types. Uh, else, if I compare it to the SQL, in the SQL in the first session we have talked about the first thing we started off with the data types. Correct. Right. The next thing which comes up over here is MongoDB Grid FS. If you remember, in a first session, I told you a bit about Grid FS. That this is one of the feature of Mongo that is Grid FS. Do you remember that? Yeah, to store large data. Absolutely correct. How to store a large data? Grid FS. Grid FS is a framework to store and access large set of data. It divides the data into chunks and store them into different documents. Okay, so what it is doing, it is taking, if there is a big data, which needs to be stored, and instead of, uh, it is, what it is doing, it is breaking that uh, data into a small pieces, and that small pieces are referred to as chunks, and it's storing them separately. So it is a, it is a grid FS is an API provided by Mongoose for storing large files such as audio or the video, audio, video, or images file. And it makes the storing of the large files more easier, right? Because step by step, even it is retrieval and the storing is more easier. And it helps us to store the large files in the database rather than putting it separately in the file system. Okay. So MongoDB, what is the problem? In, in MongoDB, the document size is limited to 16 MB. The size of a particular document could be maximum up to 16 MB. So that is the problem. How if I have a data which I wanted to store in a document and the size is more than 16 MB, how can I do that? Okay. So the solution is grid effort solves the limitation problem. Break it, break it into a small parts and then store it. So how? breaks the file into a smaller manageable chunks, stores these chunks of data into a one collection called fs.chunks. So it will create a fs.chunks over here. It stores the information about the whole file itself in another collection called fs.files. I will just show you these things practically. Then connects these documents by the properties that are references to each other. It also sees some property on the basis of which it was able to see that all these chunks are of the same file. Hmm. Okay, let me try to give an example. Okay, so first of all, how to get this Mongo file? So if you remember, uh, we have talked about Mongo import. Yes. Yes. We have downloaded that. You have downloaded the database tools. Yes. Right. So if you have downloaded it, if I click on this link, it will once again take you to the same location of the tools, MongoDB database tools, and you can download it from here, but you need not to download it once again, because you have already downloaded it. 
So if you will browse to the file, which we have downloaded the database tools, you will get it over here. <clears throat> you will be getting an option called, here it is, Mongo files. Okay. There is a Mongo file. So you will get this Mongo files in the folder which you have downloaded, database tools. So you can just copy it and paste it into your bin folder. Clear? Copy and paste it to the bin folder. Okay. Then, few points. Now, MongoDB is a database tool, just like Mongo import, it also needs to be executed from the command prompt uh, and not from the MongoDB shell. So, so, so for this, uh, oh, sorry, I have Let me give you an example first and then I will explain it. So you can see there is no uh, fs.chunks or something like that files can, uh, folder over here. Sorry, uh, document over here, a collection over here. So, and I will go to the bin folder and let me see for some bigger files over here. So I have kept some bigger files over here. Yes, I have a few images over here. Again, these are small size. So this is an image, the size of this image, oops, close the folder. Right. So here are two small files. Here I have my picture over here. So comparatively, you can see the size is quite bigger. And I have also uh, kept a video file over here and the size is comparatively more bigger. Okay, so we will see how can we put it into uh, the MongoDB database. Okay. So for this, let me see, okay. I will go to the command prompt. And I will see over here. So I will say Mongo files. Mongo files and I wanted to put it into the guess database. The name of the file. So this is boy. Boy dot jpg. Put boy dot jpg. And double hyphen DB is H O. DB is equal to H O. This was the name we have. That's right. Press enter. You say, what is it? Connected to Mongo, adding grid files added. It has been added. 
Now, let me go back to the MongoDB shell and I will say show collections and you will see two new collection automatically created fs.chunks and fs.files. Okay. So that means the data is there in your database. Okay. Now let us say Let us see db dot fs dot files dot find. You want you can use dot pretty. Here it is. So it is giving you the details, the length the chunk size metadata if any so it is paying the file name now you say db dot fs dot files dot find or oh, not files chunks chunks dot find what happens and it goes so this is it has been converted into a binary form so whatever the image is it has been converted into a binary form and this is your chunks how does the chunks look like okay now find this comma uh, Files dot find, and this is the chunks dot find. Now you can see as the file size file size was very small, only one chunk has been created. Only one chunk has been created and you can see it over here. See the file ID. Double line six double three. It is double line six double three. So no matter how many chunks will be creating, all the chunks will be containing this file ID, which will indicate that this particular chunk belongs to this particular ID. And for this particular file. And this is the ID of this particular chunk we have. Okay, let us do the same thing once again. And I will go to the shell, sorry, no, go to the command prompt. And I have another file called echo. Echo is also a small file. Okay, no problems. Let's take it. So I will say mongo files is the command. Put, put is when you want it to put the data into the database. If you want to retrieve it, the command is get. Boy, instead of boy, I will say echo, e c o dot, and double hyphen dv is the database in which you want it to store is, I say batch four, press enter, it has said added. Let me go to the shell, and I will say files dot find and see what you are getting. Now you are getting two over here. Two files are there. One is boy and one is echo. Now let us see the chunks. Here it is. Just notice, can you tell me which chunk is of which particular file? So we can see it on the basis of the file ID double line six double three. Uh, double line six double three. So this is a chunk of boy and it is say 78 ed3 78 ed3 so this is a chunk of e clear is this clear yes hello hello okay 
Now let us try to take a bigger file and see if we get more chunks. Till now we are taking a smaller file and we are getting only single chunk. Now I will take a comparatively bigger file and the name is me. Me. Here it is. And if you will say. show collections the these are only you will not have multiple chunks and the files collection for the multiple uh, files which you have added as a grid fs right there will be only one collection of chunks and one collection of files in one database now let's take files.find so you can see we are getting three over here and let's say chunks.find. Can you see? One, two, three, four, five, six. And if I will go up here it is. It is the file ID is double A F9. So you can say double A F90. Double A F9. Double A F9. Double A F9. And so on. So these, as it was a bigger size, so GridFS has created six parts of this file, six chunks of this file. Clear? Now, let us try to take one. Let us try to take one, uh, what? Video. Video file, right. We have a video, a bigger one. What is the name? G-A-R-M-I dot M-P-4. Right. Let's take it, not over here, but we will go over here and it is say G A R M I dot M P four. Let's see what happens. Adding, it's saying adding, added. Right. If you have noticed, it has slightly taken more time because it's a big file. How many MB? I think somewhere around 70 MB. Yep. Around 80 MB file. Let's see. Same chunks and file is there. So we'll say files.find and you can see here it goes. When it has so. So what does this file contains? It contains the ID, ID of this file, a unique ID, length, chunk size. What is the size of average size of a chunk? When this it is uploaded, the na name of the file and any other data regarding the file which we have uploaded. And let us see chunks over here. So you can see what was the name ID was there, fine. ID is B141. B there it is. Sorry. B141. B141. So 10, it has created around 10. Uh, what do you call it? 10 chunks of it. Okay, so you can see 10 chunks has been created each. Am I clear? Yes. Similarly, let me take one. Okay, so now my folder doesn't contain these files. Once again, I will go over here and I will say, instead of put, I will say get. Now I wanted to get the data. Press enter. Finished writing. Can you see? It was not there initially. Yes. 
are you getting this point yes let us try one more as you say there is no me dot jpg over here let me try to retrieve that get me dot jpg finish typing see over here uh, where it is here it is clear you can get whatever you want boy finish writing you will see boy and echo also over here okay so using the grid fs we have written and uh, we have fetched it also but in a real time situation you will get something more better than this because as of now we are learning mongo and we are just dealing directly with the mongo but in a real time situation what will happen you will create an application suppose you have created an application to upload and download the videos so because of grid fs your uh, video will be uploaded as well as downloaded in parts chunk by chunk so this which will give the user more convenience more convenience to the user because if let's take if the video is of 100 mb right so the user doesn't have to wait first for 100 mb to download it and then start playing the video it is chunk by chunk it is downloaded let's take first Uh, 20 uh, MB chunk has been downloaded, or 16 MB chunk has been downloaded, and which has been played. And while it is playing simultaneously, another chunk is also being downloaded. So the wait time of the user will reduce. Do you agree with me on this? Yes. Okay. Right. So let us once again summarize the grid FS process. right so grid fs has solved the problem of uh, the limitation of 16 mb limitation of the document size by divide by dividing or by breaking a big data into a small chunks and uh, to manage this grid fs has created two collections one is fs dot chunks and another is fs dot files dot chunks folder contains the data and files folder contains the information about the files then in the chunks uh, fs chunks collection contain the size of each chunk is 255 kb the number of chunks creates depend on the file size which i have already shown you when we were taking a small uh, file the chunk was created only once and uh, when i have taken a slightly bigger it is 6 and we have have taken a more bigger one it is somewhere around 10 uh, chunks were there 10 11 chunks were there chunks stores the actual data each chunk is linked to a file information by file underscore id property the file underscore id points to a document that is stored in the uh, files fs files collection so the chunk belongs to which particular file is stored with the help of underscore file files underscore id property so here i have tried to display one chunk over here files collection contains the information about what is the name of the file average size of the chunk upload date size of the file this is important from the interview point of view size of the file and file metadata so this is what you are getting over here all right okay so as you already know that mongo uh, mongo uh, sorry grid fs is a part of uh, the database tool which you have to download separately so you can check the in your downloads folder where you have downloaded initially it will be there if you couldn't find find it 
you can download it post the session. Mongo files options. So connection string command file name or ID. So Mongo files put and get. These are the two methods which we are using over here. Put is to write and get is to retrieve. Then as I have put it into the same path, same folder, I do not have to give the path. Otherwise, you have to give the complete path wherever the file is. Okay. And then the name of the database in which you will be able, you wanted to put this files information. Here it is the output of files and chunks. Right. So the next thing which is coming up over here is MongoDB Compass. And what is MongoDB Compass? Have you ever heard MongoDB Compass? Hmm? Yes or no? Have you ever heard about MongoDB Compass? No. Yeah, while uh, installing. While installing. Absolutely, yes. And at that point of time, I have explicitly asked you to uncheck that we do not want to install MongoDB Compass. So MongoDB Compass is basically a graphical user interface of Mongo. Till now, you have seen a CUI, uh, a character user interface of Mongo, where you, where you are writing all the commands and all. Okay, but here it is a graphical user interface. So all the things which we have done till yet, we will be able to do it in a, a GUI format by using MongoDB Compass, like creation of the documents, creation of the, uh, say, collections and all, database, creating uh, database, doing the various operations. So all those things we will be able to do it. So we will proceed on with this Mongo. Hmm. We will be proceeding on with this in our next session. That is MongoDB Compass. And we will see few of few more options regarding few more, uh, I would say, what? Few more features of like the, uh, in the initial first session, I told you sharding and all those things we will take up, talk about. So some important points we will be talking about in this in the next session, right?